Hey everyone, how's it going? <laughs> all right, great. How cool are these badges, man? I've been changing my name all morning. <laughs> it's been pretty cool. Uh, so thank you so much for having me up here. Um, I'm here from Brooklyn. Um, I uh, work at a company called Stack Overflow, and I also created um, a product called JewelBots that we're going to be talking about today. Um, yeah, today's Stack Overflow's 10th birthday, which is like 10 years of um, not having to read some guy's whole blog post before getting an answer to things, which is nice. <laughs> um, so today's talk, I'm going to go a little bit about why I thought JewelBots is important, and we think JewelBots is an important thing to, um, to the world. I'm going to show you some magic. Um, and then we're going to do a deep dive into the technology that drives JewelBots. So we're going to do this all in 15 minutes. So we're ready to go. Um, so first of all, um, some hands in the audience um, are people here who here is like has coded, knows how to code, has coded in the past. All right, so nearly everyone. Um, so if you could raise your hand if you were under 20 years old when you started coding. Okay, so that's still pretty much everyone. Um, if you were under 15, all right, that's about a third of you. Uh, if you were under 12, that's about 10% of you. Okay, so lots of people being really young and coding. Um, so uh, I, um, well, I'll get back to this. So um, one thing that is awesome about the world of nine uh, to 14 year old girls is that they rule everything. And you might not think this is true, but I'm about to change your mind. Who here knows who this guy is? You know, you guys seen this guy? His name's Mark Wahlberg. He makes hamburgers. Um, <laughs> well, this guy used to be this guy. And girls around the world were like, this guy's going to be a star. I'm going to buy every magazine this guy is in. I'm going to buy every one of those albums. And now we get to see him in one out of every 25 movies. What about this guy? All right. You guys have seen this guy? Well, this guy used to be this guy. And I'm really happy to be, tell you that I'm one of the hundreds of thousands of young girls that made this guy a star. <laughs> Um, and who here listens to Taylor Swift? All right, I won't make you raise your hands, but we all know. <laughs> we all know who discovered Taylor Swift. No one cares what us, you know, 30-something-year-olds are listening to. Everyone is listening to whatever the teenagers are listening to just six months after they started listening to it. Um, but even bigger than that, apps like Instagram, Snapchat, RIP Musical.ly, um, these were discovered by teenagers, not adults, right? The initial audience for all these applications, the places that we want to work, are discovered by some really influential folks, and they're really young. But their futures are at risk, as influential as they are. Um, we all know that technical literacy is really important if you want to be competitive in the job field. Um, and software developer roles and a lot of hardware developer roles as well are going to be growing in the next 10 years. But 18% of computer science graduates approximately are female, 19% of AP computer science test takers, and 15% of Google's tech force is female. So looking around in this audience, and a lot of the audience I've spoken to, I learned that people often learn to code when they're young. When I was talking to a lot of my peers who were developers and I asked them, when did you start coding? I heard often it was because of gaming or a community that they found when they were young um, that really got them into coding. And, and a lot of people, um, I, learned some, I learned some cool things. I remember when MySpace came out, it was the first time that I was cool to my friends because um, the fact that I was a software developer was cool because all of them wanted the glitter gifts on their pages. And they were like, the only way, how do I do this? Teach me HTML. Um, and so um, there's been lots of things like that, like Neopets and now Minecraft is a great example of a product that is a, um, that's an open source community of kids teaching themselves Java, tiny little eight-year-olds with server farms running around and um, making mods for Minecraft. So we were like, okay, 
how do we do this and you know target uh, people that identify as feminine um, and you know, speak to their interests so we talked to a lot of them um, we went and talked to about 200 um, of kids in this age group um, I went to some high schools and taught some free beginner electronics classes. Teachers get really excited about that because they don't have resources, it turns out. Um, and I uh, met with a lot of girls and asked them what was fun to them and wrote things down and talked about them. Um, and what we heard from them over and over again was they are obsessed with their friends. Um, their friendships, their friends are so important to them at this age. Uh, it's what identifies them. Um, they spend a lot of time in community. Um, that's why social apps work so well with them because you know socializing is something that's so important to them at that age. So we took some ideas. We did a Kickstarter, like a lot of great hardware projects start out. Um, I'd been a software developer for uh, at the time about 13. 14 years, and I've been doing it for 17 years, and I was like, I've done software, like I know Arduino, how hard can it be to build a, like, a commercial product? <laughs> yeah, yeah, every time someone's like, I'm in software, I want to do a hardware project, what can you advise me about? I'm like, don't do, don't, just don't do it. <laughs> Go home, <laughs> start a family, you know, like whatever. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so we did a lot of meeting with them. We talked to them a lot. Uh, man, I hate the flowers. We talked to uh, like so many girls, and they made the decision every step of the way. We did. We sent them designs. Um, we did a lot of sketches. We sent them dozens and dozens of different things: pinwheels, stars, you know, all these things. Um, asked them to vote. The flower won by a landslide. So we made a flower bracelet because that's what they wanted. Um, we did a lot of prototyping before ending up with our own board. Uh, that big old guy on bottom was our works like prototype. Um, and the tiny, tiny little one was our looks like prototype. Um, we ended up with something close to in the middle. Um, here's an evolution of our boards as they went. Um, one thing that uh, it's really surprising how um, small these uh, components are was really a lot what I learned. Uh, our microprocessor is four millimeters by four millimeters, and I always say I could eat it, and I'd have no idea. I don't go around eating microprocessors, so <laughs> I try not to. Um, so the thing that was important to us as we were building was an active online community where um, girls can code things and share code with each other, uh, like a baby stack overflow, if you will. Um, the ability to have your bracelet light up when you're near your friends and send secret messages to them when they're nearby. So um, that was the really exciting part to them. The, exci the, thing, the idea was to build something that's fun first, so like focus on the fun and make it open source so that if they um, want to, they can just have fun, but there's that ability to learn to code as well. Um, and yeah, the, the idea is to make it more fun with code. So inside these guys, there's a bunch of plastic and a bunch of nylon um, and Joolbot's hardware inside. Um, we made the caps interchangeable so we can decide, uh, design other ones in the future. We have uh, one that has an awesome robot on it on our site that people have been 3D printing and putting on their bots. Um, under the hood, we have got a button, RGB LEDs. Uh, a, a USB micro. Um, we're using the Nordic chip, the NRF51. Um, and the reason why we chose that guy is because um, so uh, Joolbots talk to each other using Bluetooth. So that's how they find other Joolbots. So like constantly polling the room and they're saying, are any of my friends nearby? Are any of my friends nearby? Um, and so when uh, the two devices find each other, that's when they react and they light up, and that's how they send the messages to each other. So uh, the NRF51 allows you to have eight simultaneous uh, central and peripheral relationships with devices that are near you, which allows us to do that. Um, there's also an app that you can use to track your friends. We used uh, Cordova and Ionic to build because there's some great BLE um, libraries in there. Uh, and right now it's only for iPhone. 
Um, all of our stuff is on GitHub, GitHub forward slash robots. You can see all our boards, you can see all our code. Um, that was an important part of our process. Um, but for next, um, I need a volunteer from the audience. Well, are you volunteering? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good question. And the answer is there's just some like troubleshooting things we need to do in order to make it Android as well. Yeah. Uh, but I do need a volunteer. Do you, do you want to be my volunteer? Yeah, come on up. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hey, I'm Matt. And you're Matt Pe from MakerNet. Awesome. Okay, well, first I have to ask if you want to be my friend. Would you be my friend? Yes, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> That's going to be a little tight. It's made for younger ones. Hey, no judge. Okay. I feel, I feel like a younger person. Okay, that's great. That's great. <laughs> okay, so to be friends, you and I are going to hold down the center button for three seconds. So one locomotive, two locomotive, three locomotive. And then let go. Oh, oh we're glowing. I think yours is off, so oh. just try it again. Oh, now, now we just turned it off, sorry. Oh, oopsie. Try again. One locomotive, two locomotive, three locomotive. Do you mind if I do it? Yeah, that? you do it. I have big fat man things. Okay, great. Okay, so now they're blinking, and now we get to choose our friendship color. So Ooh. once it sees a you see a color you like, let me know. Now, 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 now. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've blue, and so this guy is like, all right, we're going to be blue friends. I'm sending the message to this guy, and it's like letting him know we're going to be blue. And then this guy is going to be like, all right. I Yay, guess I'm blue. blue. Rockin'. Awesome. Now, um, you can go sit down. So now, whenever we're together, our braces will be blue. Okay. Your braces will start being blue any second. Any moment now. Any second now. There um, it is. I'm there. blue. <laughs> okay, great. And if you go sit down, I'll send you a message. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Thanks for being an awesome volunteer. Uh, so that's how they work, uh, and uh, to code them, you um, plug them into your machine using a micro USB, and uh, you can use the Arduino IDE. Uh, we used a lot of the work of Red Bear Labs, which are awesome people to help work with the Nordic chip and allow us to program um, the, uh, the device using C++. And so normal programming uh, for firmware is not easy, especially when you're eight. Um, and so we had to think a lot about how we would make it so kids could code these things and they would be fun to code um, and make it a little easier. So we um, abstracted things out a little bit and opened up some of the functionality to them using a library that they can um, use themselves. So the ability to turn lights on and set light colors, the um, the way you work with the button on the device, the way um, you send messages to each other, we opened this all up to them by building an API that made sense to them. Um, we also added hard-coded colors that they could use. Uh, one of the girls in the forums, their favorite thing is to come up with new colors by combining the new lights and then like, asking us to add it to the firmware. So that's been pretty fun. Um, and so the, the, as a result, oh, this is so small, you can't see this at all. But I can just tell you what this is. Um, so as a result, the, co the code looks like something like LED, like instantiating a, a, the LED class by making a variable called LED. And then you can say, like, LED, turn on all. And then you pass it the variable, which is a color, like green. So it'll say, LED, turn on all green. or um, uh, we also pre-baked in some animations for them so they can um, make fun uh, animations, so rainbow animations and um, flashing animations and different things like that are some things that they worked on. You can at least see the animations. 
Um, so another thing they like to do is come up with new animations. Some things they created, um, we have really nerdy kids that come up with things like Pomodoro timers, which is crazy. We have fun kids that make uh, fun games like Simon type games. Um, we're working on, right now um, in the app, our biggest priority is to give them access to the internet so they can program them to like tell them if they have a new Instagram message or like if it's going to start raining or stuff like that. So um, that's kind of what's our product development timeline. So I'm running short on time. Wait. Um, but if you had told me that, if you told me five years ago that we'd have so many eight-year-olds, if I'd be sitting in the room talking to eight, nine, ten-year-olds and having them so stoked about coding C++, I would have told you you were nuts. Um, but it is something to behold when you are in a room full of kids that never would have looked for this on their own, but um, now have found it because it involves something that they really enjoy, which is their friendship. Um, so we've learned we have a 44% conversion rate from um, kids that just play with the device to kids that are coding, which we were, we were expecting 10%, and we wanted to work our way up from there, so we were really stoked about 44%. Um, we've shipped 10,000 units to 33 countries so far, and have had uh, hundreds of students come to in-person events, which are super fun. We always have things like face painting and hair dyeing and like all kinds of fun stuff like that. Thank you everyone for having me here and I hope you get to check out Jewelbox. I can stick around for some questions. Yeah. Yeah. A good drag and drop. Yeah. So that's because of my stubbornness and uh, <laughs> really um, like I just think kids are smart and coding isn't that hard um, and kids are really smart and so uh, there have been a lot of requests from parents for that kind of thing so probably we'll probably do that at some point but I've been just not surprised but just really stoked to see like kids can figure it out like I was coding C++ when I was 11, and I'm just normal, you know, it's just, you have to be into it, yeah. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, right now, they're on the website, um, they're 49 for one, I think 89 for two, uh, and we do educator discounts, so if you're an educator, get a discount. Cool. Well, thanks everyone so much for having me. This is awesome. I'm so excited to see everyone's projects and learn.